Welcome everybody, this is Venom2099, aka Venom3099, aka Vmon. This is a very special video upload. Uh, before I even get started, I'd like to give a big shout out to my boys over at LeagueGaming.com's CHL Saskatoon Blades. Thank you to the GM, uh, Captain Stunad, aka TK, and the assistant GM, NoFoxGiven413. Thank you for letting me play in your team. Shoutouts to my teammates as well, my Fords, Fox, uh, Joker, Brewer, Casper, Best Case, Devil Boy, Titan Dog Sheep, and Sparrow666. But most of all to know it's Yeti. Yeti's a beast, always chiming in with a seismic hit just when we needed it. Uh, big props also to my defensive core, TK of course, uh, Denon, St. Moreau's, Wheels, and Zero Crash. And last but not least, my partner in crime, Jersey Devil, the starting goalie for our team. Thank you so much for a great season, boys. My first season in league gaming. I really enjoyed playing with all of you. I just wish it was in a better circumstance that I had to make this announcement. Now, let me set the stage here a bit. What you're seeing now is Game 3 of our Best of seri 7 Series against the Swift Current Broncos, which was played on Tuesday, April 1st, 2014 at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, the previous game, Game 2, which was played earlier at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, on the same day, we won by a score of 3-0. Now, spoiler alert, we're going to win this game in overtime by a score of 4-3. to three. But why spoil it if I'm showing you the video, you say? Well, because the information I'm going to share with you pretty much demands that you know what went down, which will include match results. Bear with me, though. It will all make sense. Trust me. So what's all this about? Well, in order to explain that, I'll have to go back in time a little bit to before we made the playoffs. You see, during the last week of the playoffs, we still weren't sure if we were going to participate or not. It went down to the very last game of the season against the very team we were trying to stay ahead of, the Prince Albert Raiders, and thankfully, we won. So, with that taken care of, now we had to prepare for the very hard task of facing off against the number one seed in our conference. But before that, we had to see what our player availability was for the playoffs. Now, let me stop here and offer up a little bit of important info. The league issued a memo to every team prior to the start of the playoffs explaining the new rules for this particular playoff. Rules which were posted on the main CHL forums and which you can see now on screen. The main points that are important to know right now are the days and times of the game and also some special lineup conditions that had to be obeyed. But we'll get to that later. In the meantime, take a few seconds to read and understand what's on screen. chance now as they move it in. Okay, so now our GMs had to get our players availability. By luck, all our players could make at least one game in the first four games. That is, until the league changed the schedule on us at the last minute. Yep, for some reason, instead of playing one game on Sunday, one game on Monday, two games on Tuesday, two games on Wednesday and one game on Thursday. Now, we had to play one game on Sunday, two games on Monday, one game on Tuesday, two games on Wednesday, and one game on Thursday. Well, what does this change, you might say? Well, one of our players, one of our best scorers on the team, to be exact, named Best Case, had personal matters to attend that week. And although he would have been available to play Game 4 on Tuesday at 9.30 p.m., sadly, the league removed that possibility by rescheduling the game for Monday 9.30 p.m. instead. So, instead of playing on Tuesday Game 4, Wednesday Game 5 and 6, he was rescheduled to play Wednesday Games 5 and 6 if needed, and then Thursday Game 7 if needed. Now understand, this is a video game, and the people that play it have real lives. Best case, I'm sure, had a very valid reason why he couldn't attend, and it's certainly not his fault that all this happened. So what happened? Well, now we're getting into the crux of the matter. After this game is done, we will be up 2-1 in our series. 
a fact the Broncos took very poorly. In fact, they took this defeat so poorly that they attempted to make a complaint to the league by announcing it publicly, by the way, that the player who scored the winning goal, our left winger Brewer, had initiated a pin against the boards before he scored, which is illegal. As you're now watching the video of that particular game, you will see that exactly at the 20 minute and 44 second mark of the video, the winger in question, Brewer, gets pinned into the board by the Broncos player. More to the fact, the goal doesn't come until quite some time later. Time enough for the Broncos to send the puck a few times back into our zone before we finally score the OT winner. So in the end, the Broncos claim was unfounded, and that, my friends, left them with a very sour taste in their mouths, as they say. The number one seed were down two games to one against the joke of the LGCHL, the Saskatoon Blades. A team that, according to many experts on the site, had no business being in the playoffs in the first place. Fast forward a bit now, to the next day for games four and five. The Broncos took game five while I was in Nets, but fell to our team and Jersey Devil, and now they were up against the wall as the Blades, our team, took a stranglehold in the series three games to one. One more win and we would accomplish the impossible dream of making it past the mighty Broncos and gain access to the second round of the playoffs. And here now is where things go downhill quick. After their loss in Game 3 and their first attempt at having our game declared a forfeit, yes, their GM actually demanded that the league remove our win, was unsuccessful, and then seeing their playoff hopes dwindle as we took a commanding 3-1 lead, they went with a different track and complained to the league that one of our players had not dressed in the first four games and again demanded that one of our wins be declared a forfeit. Now by chance, or misfortune rather, the complaint made its way to the very person who wrote the rules, a certain Brody, aka B. McDonald 19, the LG commissioner. And the rule we infringed is this one you now see on screen. Now before we continue again, let's take a very close look at this rule, or rather, the conditions that make up this rule. Now, the conditions state, skaters, means forwards and defense, can only play a maximum of three games per series. Goalies can only play a maximum of five games per series. This condition sets the maximum number of games a skater or a goalie can play in the entire series, whether the series ends in a sweep or goes the distance to game seven. The following condition states, in a four game series, every skater must be scheduled or play once in the first four games. Every goalie must be scheduled or play a minimum of once in the first four games. Let's stop here for a bit and relook at these last two conditions. Funny how they're worded differently for each type of player, no? Well, let's leave this like that for now and we'll come back to it later. Continuing with the next condition, in a five or six game series, every skater must be scheduled or play twice if the series goes up to six games. Every goalie must be scheduled or play a minimum of twice if the series goes up to six games. The last condition reads as follows. In Game 7, the Game 7 lineup is up to the digression of the digression? I think he means discretion of the team's management. Basically, if a series goes up to 7 games, then GMs are pretty much free to put whoever they want in the lineup as long as they both agree to it. At least that's how it's left to be interpreted. Oh, and a small note, there's a rule just after this that states that if a player cannot be scheduled to fit the above conditions, then they can, very important, can, not must, or are obligated to, be replaced by an emergency call-up or ECU player who can play a max of two games per series, meaning one game if the series ends in four games, and two games if the series goes to six games or more. Alright, so if you were following what I've been saying to you up to this point, it should be clear that one of our top scorers in the team, best case, was not able to sit up in any of the first four games because of a prior personal commitment, but foremost because the league changed the schedule at the last minute so that game four would be played on Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. and not 9.30 p.m. as it was originally scheduled. And now the Broncos had enough evidence to submit a complaint to the league and demand that our game be declared a forfeit. Now here I have to stop you again 
and we're going to take another look at those famous rules our good pal Brody posted up. Now this rule is very important as it deals with the consequences of not following Adolf, uh, I mean Brody's rules. So up on our screen we see that first and foremost, all management violations will be cumulative during the series. I hope that's clear enough so I don't have to go into a lengthy explanation of what that means because I may run out of video if I have to. Okay, so now, after a first violation, a minor penalty shall be issued to the guilty team for the start of the next game. A second viol violation sees the violating party issued two consecutive minor penalties at the start of the next game. Finally, a third violation incurs a one-game suspension to the MOC. I'm guessing that means the manager. Oh, uh, a little addendum to the, this rule, apparently. The league will reserve the right to issue a removal of a game, I suppose, if a situation occurs that requires a more serious punishment than the three violations listed above. To sum it up, if the manager goofs once, the team can start a game with one or two minor penalties at the start of the game. If he goofs up to three times, he can be suspended. If the manager partakes in something serious, like maybe cheating, I imagine, then the league can decide to remove, forfeit, a game. So now back to our series with the Broncos. When I left on this wild tangent, I explained to you that we were up 3-1 after four games. I also mentioned how best case one of our top scorers in the team was not able to attend any of these first four games. Which is, if you think about it, a big disadvantage to our team. Now, let's move on to game five, where the Broncos, desperate not to get taken out in five games, played really well, solid game, you know, and they won it, making the series 3-2. And then game six, well, game six saw us come back and win the game to take the series 4-2. The impossible happened. The Broncos, the first seed in the WHL East, were defeated by the lowly eight seed Blades onto the second rounds of the playoffs for us. Well, no. No, we didn't. Because the league, or rather Brody, took it upon himself to declare the last game, that means game six, a forfeit. And so now, we would have to play a game seven to decide the outcome of the series. The reason he gave was that we violated the rule we had to play all available players at least once in the first four games. But this was our team's first offense not only of the playoffs, but in the entire regular season up till now. And the scheduling slip up happened because conflicting situations lined up to make it impossible for us to play one of our top players. This wasn't a concerted effort by our GMs to cheat the Broncos out of the series. This wasn't even a malicious attempt at circumventing the rules. It was a simple mistake, which according to the consequences enumerated, should have netted us at worst a two minute penalty in game five or six so what was the heinous crime we committed that saw Brody take away our series win? Well, that's not too hard to guess, is it? We, the Saskatoon Blades, the laughing stock, the joke of the LGCHL, 8th seed in the WHL Eastern Division, a team that by all accounts shouldn't have even made it into the postseason. We defeated the mighty Swift Current Broncos. How humiliating. So humiliating, in fact, that the Broncos GM pleaded with Brody to have our game forfeited. An unusual fact, as the plaintiff party has no ruling to demand a punishment like this, it's up to the governor or board of governors to take the complaint and make a ruling that justifies the crime, as it were. Now, to many, it would seem like a clear-cut case. Obviously, the Blades did infringe the rules. They did not play one of their players in the first four games of the series. Perhaps. However, I can't see how that can be construed as cheating or anything remotely close to being an infraction so severe that it would require that our game be declared a forfeit and our series win taken away from us. Sure, the league does reserve the right to dole out a more serious punishment if they think the crime requires it, but what if there was no crime? What if the Blaze didn't infringe any rules? What if the league, more particularly Brody, made a colossal mistake? By now you're probably thinking, what the heck are you talking about? 
Of course you guys broke the rules. You just showed us the rules on the site. You just told us that you didn't play one of your players in the first four games. Clearly, that's a violation of the rules. <laughs> uh, but that's where a command of the English language and a little bit of intelligence actually make that quite a bit of intelligence is needed. So, let's go back to those rules about the scheduling of a game, shall we? The conditions is thus. In a four-game series, the rule for that condition is thus. All players must be scheduled or play once in the first four games. In other words, what this means is if the series is played out in four games, what's known in the sporting world as a sweep, then the condition is that all available players must have played once in any of the first four games. Now, if you ask me, this is a stupid rule. How can you know series will end in four games? Unless your team is either up or down 3-0 in the first place. At that point, the team that's ahead must schedule play any of its players that haven't played yet for game four to keep in line with that rule. The team that's behind, well, they could take a chance and not follow the rule. I mean, if they lose, what's the league going to do? Give them another loss. On the flip side, if they win, well, nah. So not even the losing team could take a gamble. And they have to make sure that they adhere to the rule. So what does this have to do with our series and the ruling? Well, everything, actually. If you remember, the Broncos won game one on Sunday. But on Monday, they lost game two. Which means the moment game two was posted up on LG and officialized, there was no way in hell this series was going to end up in four games. Thus, our series became, at the very least, a five or six game series. And so the rule for the condition on a five or six game series is that every skater must play at least two games in the first six games. Now, best case was scheduled and played in games five and six. In other words, the Blades were robbed of a win. Robbed of a series. Humiliated. Our players ridiculed on the forums. Our GM's pleas for an appeal ignored based on the egotistical power trip of this idiot Brody whose grasp on the English language is on the level of a very retarded billiard ball. And I think I'm insulting me people with mental retardation at the very least, not to mention billiard balls across every pool hall in North America. How a league of the caliber of LeagueGaming.com could leave important decisions to someone who most likely couldn't find the correct way to sit on a toilet seat is beyond me. I've heard rumors that this Brody was responsible for bringing down the second biggest virtual hockey league, the appropriately named VHL. At first I thought it was an, an exaggeration, but boy, seeing this man in action now, I can't say I'm in the least bit surprised. So where do we go from here? Well, at this point it doesn't really matter, does it? They made their decision, and they're not going back on it. And to tell you the truth, our team has moved on. We've accepted our lot in life. We'll be the bigger men and take the brunt of LG's resentment. I'm only sad, really, and the reason why I'm making this video is because those that are beside Brody, like Tristan, one of the founders of League Gaming, Ozzy and G2, and Crazy Ron is here, two of the admins who I've talked to and, and shown this information, well, all they've done is they basically ignored it, even though we've told them, even though we've shown them this. And then they turn around and they tell us that there's nothing that we or they can do because Brody makes the rules and the rules are broken. What a slap in the face to be told that, as if Brody followed the rules. He made them up as he went. He doled out punishment because our team beat his good buddy's team, the Tech Stealth, by the way, who's the Broncos GM. There is no rule that it says that we have to play everyone in the first four games. There is no rule that says we have to replace a player who's not available. There is no rule that says a simple managerial mistake is punishable by the most severe penalty possible. Yet the Broncos could break the rules without consequence, eh? Oh, sure, they dressed a player in Game 3 that had a different uh, gamer tag on Xbox Live than his name on League Gaming. They purposely had a player drop out of games they were losing. We, f we found that out when we came back into the lobby to replay the, the, the game from the point where they dropped, the player was in the lobby. Instead, you know, if you drop, you're supposed to drop outside of the game. No, no, this guy was right there. And then when he would point out, hey, what are you doing here? Poop, he would disappear. They purposely did that, okay? And also, there's another rule on Lee Gaming that says that if you file a complaint and make it public, then 
the complaint is null and void. And that's what the Broncos did, and yet all their infractions were ignored. And then they have the gall to tell us there was no case of preferential status between a team, their GM, and the league admins. Sure, of course not. So, anyways, there you have it. I don't expect any of you to take my word for it. But if you want to see for yourself, well, take a look at the links in the description that take you to the screen caps I took uh, for the, uh, the playoff rules. And then look at the information I gave you and decide for yourself if the league was right or wrong in the way they treated us. For myself, I'm at least glad I can shed light on this and hopefully in some way redeem my teammates of the Saskatoon Blade, who really, they were incredibly hard to get where we did. And only to have this douchebag Brody tear it away from us and give it to an undeserving team. Brody, if you're watching this, shame on you. Shame on you for what you did. Shame on LeagueGaming.com and the other admins for allowing you to get away with this. Shame also on the other teams who took your side. If you really think about it, this could have happened to them as well. You could have chosen the high road and stand with the blades, but no. Instead, you preferred to dick ride this fucking idiot. I hope you're happy with yourselves. And to the Broncos, you know you don't deserve to be there. We beat you. Fair and square. And the only reason you went past us is because you had to have someone in power on your side. You didn't even have the skills to beat us at hockey. Number one team? Pah. Not even after Brody took away our win. We won four games and you only won three. How does it feel to know all of you are just big frauds? <laughs> well, that's it for me. I'm done. For my peeps the blades, I'm Venom2099. Thanks for listening.